Hey everybody, Gia Mora here with A. Laura Brody from Dreams by Machine. And today we are going to talk about staple draping. Yay! We're here in your live workspace, yes. which is creative and beautiful and filled with all kinds of amazing art, including the art that we're sitting in now. Thank you part so of your much. Opulent mobility uh, yes. project. Um, tell everybody a little bit about your background. You've done TV, film, opera, dance, uh, everything. Cosplay, commercials, anything involving costumes, pretty much, which is a whole lot. Yes. Uh, I've been doing freelance for a little over 25 years, so you do get a little bit of a broad base of experience. Yeah. I worked on things for the Black Eyed Peas, and I worked on stuff for Fergie, and I worked on stuff for LMFAO, and I know a lot of people will remember celebrities, but I remember the big silly things I did. <laughs> so, dressing the animatronics for Tokyo Disney Sea over at Walt Disney Imagineering was pretty awesome, yeah. um, including draping dinosaurs in the Tiki Tiki Room. <laughs> remake and the call of cthulhu where I, I did the costume designs it was set in 1920s done like a 20s silent film all black and white so you can get away with everything yeah. it's awesome <laughs> um, it's the big silly stuff that i really remember so you don't just make uh, amazing no. costume pieces you also do kind of daily wear right things that yes. everybody can create and make themselves. Absolutely. Um, and that is part of this staple draping movement. Part of the whole idea of doing the staple draping is to show people that, yes, you can make things yourself. Of course it can be complicated. Of course it can be something you can spend a lifetime learning to do. But to get started is not that hard. Now let's say uh, I'm feeling particularly ambitious and I come to you and I say, Laura, yeah. I've seen what you do. I want to know how to do it myself. How can I make my holiday dress from scratch? You actually can. Now, you can go through the traditional process. Sure. Completely. Or you can start draping something on, well, not so much on yourself. You'll have to have a partner okay. because it's really hard to drape yourself. Then you and your partner will get to drape each other. Great. And when you say draping, yes. Talk to me since I'm I'm out of this world, right? Yeah, I I'm, I put on right. the costumes that I'm I'm told, and I say, "Wow, I look amazing!" And Thank she you. does a beautiful job. <laughs> but yes, it's a whole different skill. But draping really is taking fabric or material of whatever kind and draping it around a form, putting it around to sculpt around the shape. Mm. So, you know, that can be a person, a dinosaur, a car, whatever it is. Right. But that pinning and putting it into shape to create the eventual garment that you want. Great. You can, with staple draping, use the existing fabric, the real one that you want to finish with. Just bear in mind you might make a few steps, missteps, you might want some extra. So in my experience with draping and, and fitting sessions and mm -hmm. whatnot, they use safety pins or straight pins and it can be tricky because you can't move because you might get poked and um, yes. it's not necessarily a, a fun process, it's kind of long, but I've watched you staple drape live and it is fun. <laughs> so, uh, so It is a lot of fun for me and it's been fun for the people who come in. The reason why I chose staples is because they're fast. You really don't want to sit there and I started doing this as a performance, right? When I first started doing staple draping because people really do like seeing things being made and you don't get to see that every day. You can't ask your standard person on the street to stand still like a mannequin and they're going to object if somebody pokes pins into them. <laughs> and safety pins are slow. You know, the thing that makes them safe makes them slow. So when I was first trying to come up with this, I thought I could use tape, which sucks so badly because tape sticks better to itself. And staplers, when I first thought about that, was, oh, this is brilliant. It's the fastest pinning method ever. Yeah. It's so easy. And I wanted to come up with something so you could drape something maybe in 30 seconds to a minute, and I've done that. Now walk me through what makes it different. We're working with staples other than it's faster. Well, there's several things. Um, first off, you're draping on you, or you're draping on your draping partner. Human beings are different. You know, we breathe, we move, we squish, we have lunch. It's all good. <laughs> uh, but none of the forms that you have, standard forms, are going to do that for you. So you can actually do that and really work with the human body mm -hmm. and what the human body wants. It also means it's probably not going to be as even, but it's also going to be completely and totally unique right. to you, right. to fit you. 
Well, and we're not all perfectly symmetrical creatures. No one is perfectly symmetrical. Right. This is a lie. A <laughs> lie! Some people are less symmetrical than others, I will grant you that, but this really gives you that space, that freedom to shape to the person. And it makes it, it, makes it a very personal process, which mm -hmm. is nice. Um, but yes, once you have stapled on a person, no, you can't wear it. <laughs> you could, but it doesn't wash well. Right. Of course, you could lace things together. Mm -hmm. You could tape it together, but that's not that washable. Right. Um, you can lace it, though. You can take yarn and big thread and just wrap things together. You could do leather thongs. You could do just about anything like that. Or you can actually use what you staple draped and turn it into a pattern. So maybe the fabric didn't turn out the way you want, or you're using something that kind of got skunky somewhere in the process. You would use that, take it off the person, draw lines wherever you stapled. Probably want to label everything as you go. Okay, that was the front, that was the side, that was the back, because that can get confusing later. Mm -hmm. But if you draw the lines where you've stapled and smoothed out in between the staples, what they call truing up the line, making it true, then you can take the staples out with your trusty staple remover and use that as your pattern okay. on any type of fabric. Sure, you're gonna have to sew it, but you have something that's custom done to you and to your draping partner, so you get a kind of a two-for-one process. And you can also make decisions about what you're going to do with it, what fabrics you're going to do with it, um, what techniques you might want to try that you wouldn't have thought of before if you were just handing off to somebody else. Right. Sure, that's convenient. This is yours. Right. This is truly yours. You also pretty much have cut out two steps, right? While I'm pinning it on you, I don't have to do a separate measurement step. I don't have to pad up a form. I'm just stapling directly onto you and then cleaning up from there. Great. I pretty much can use that fabric as the pattern. Right. It's faster. It's faster significantly. Yes. And then, then you can turn that into your piece. Excellent. So we will see you guys back here shortly for another segment of Dreams by Machine with A. Laura Brody. Thank you so much.